go play some System Shock or Dead Space instead. <laughs> Solarix is a fairly linear, stealth-based game that feels the need to advertise itself as something more. Solarix advertises itself as a science fiction horror game featuring open-ended levels for both combative and stealth-focused playstyles. We will find throughout the course of this review that that is not completely in the least really true. <laughs> Stop me if you've heard this one before. A little bit of story. You are Walter, a silent protagonist with a mysterious past. Hmm. To spice things up, though, you are subjected to a series of voices in your head. Some lines are an extreme pleasure. The writing is superb, and you might even want to hear some lines again. However, that's really the only reason I can imagine to give this game a replay. There are only three weapons. A stun gun, which can only be used on enemies to the back of the head, and it will be your primary weapon. You do get a pistol and a shotgun, real weapons, but they'll only really be used for killing light bulbs to give yourself more darkness to slink through. While the darkness aspect is fun for stealth lovers, uh, ones looking for a more combative type experience will find that there is no iron sight on any of the guns, and it's, it's basically proof to me that these guns are just for looking. <laughs> so use the darkness to slink past the guards, stun them in the back of the head if you'd like, and you might even notice that these guards, while you're crouching at least, are extremely dense. They cannot hear you even if you're approaching directly behind them unless you take a standing step. It's quite strange, but it is not completely grim. The characters are extremely well developed and the creepy atmosphere is sure to seep into your bones. The aesthetic and music turn a simple alerted guard into a pretty satisfying scare. However, after a couple hours, I had it down to a science, and guards became less of a threat and more of a chore. However, fumbling said chores was terrifying up until the last hour or so. When you get the shotgun. <laughs> While there are some amazing sights to see, much of the game retains a sci-fi sense of horror with tightly closed metal corridors. Even in the wide open levels, you're kept on a mostly linear path. For a game that supposedly offers open-ended levels with combative or stealth-based gameplay, I felt quite frankly lied to. Even in the large open levels, you may find yourself having to use your flashlight. A lot of the game is extremely dark, so you won't get to fully appreciate the environment that you're walking through. I might pull some punches if the game was advertised for what it was, but as it stands, I think anyone, uh, except for maybe sci-fi and survival horror fans, will be disappointed. Some horror fans I know have grown out of the survival horror genre, uh, being disappointed by weapons that may as well be non-existent, and the obligatory stealth, oh my god, the obligatory stealth. It's absolutely brilliant, I'll say that much. Playtime is easily doubled in one fell swoop. While the story might redeem things, um, for that to be truly be possible, it would have to contain a lot less cliches. Pretty writing and quality voice acting are extremely hard pressed to rescue this plot. There were also multiple bugs, from clipping through walls into unoccupied wastelands to a save state that left me endlessly falling through the floor. <laughs> I can tell Solarix is a labor of love, but the aforementioned, as well as the lack of upgrades and customization, and enemies that move and act like cocaine-addicted robo-dancers in an 80s disco, makes it extremely hard for me to recommend this to anyone for $20. Perhaps survival horror fans will enjoy the aesthetic, and they'll get their kicks from it. But until a few more patches are released, I'd steer clear and go play some System Shock or Dead Space instead. Alright, so here's my score breakdown. I do thank Pulse Tense Games and Kiss Limited for allowing me to put this game through its paces. And although mostly what I had to offer was criticism, I hope it is constructive. So, for the gameplay side, we have the controls which I've given a 6 out of 10. Uh, it feels a bit clunky, and there are no iron sights for any of the weapons, 
which is a big no-no in my book. <laughs> the fun factor I've given an 8 out of 10, there are some lovely uh, jump scares and they build up quite well. The difficulty I've given a 3 out of 10, simply because the enemies are already pretty sensitive uh, if you are out of sneak mode, and then in hard mode they're completely insensitive even if you're in if you are in sneak mode um, and you you also sneak slower so really the only difference is uh, that you're crawling around the game even slower so 3 out of 10 for difficulty replayability I've given a 1 out of 10 there are some good lines there uh, but not much else to keep me coming back innovation I've given a 3 out of 10 it's way too similar in story and environment to system shock and dead space for me to really uh plug the innovation score uh for the graphics on the aesthetic side i've given an 8 out of 10 it really does have some nice visuals in this game especially for an indie studio and especially for a game made in udk which is a bit of an out, uh, outdated engine these days the music i've given a 2 out of 10 there are basically just ambient ominous tones and like dissonant strings but there's no payoff at the end, like you'll get a jump scare from the strings, but there's no monster around the corner. It's quite quite a strange choice with the music, in my opinion. Sound effects, I enjoy the gunfire, I enjoy the, the guards walking around rambling to themselves. I think the voice actors did a pretty good job, so I've decided to give the sound effects a, a 7 out of 10. Pretty good use of sound. The story is a 7 out of 10. It is definitely full of tropes and cliches. However, they are tropes and cliches for a reason. They do bring up some uh, interesting arguments and some interesting uh, things, to, things to think about if you haven't played System Shock or Dead Space. <laughs> but, yeah. Those, those two game stories basically cover this one. Well, just System Shock, even. Uh, level design, I've given a 5 out of 10. It's all pretty linear, but it is extremely pretty. Uh, that is, if you can brave the light because most of the game will be just walking around through the darkness with not a whole lot happening. Uh, overall, I, I didn't find this game that engaging, unfortunately, but I hope that some constructive criticism was able to come from this review. So the final score for Solarix is a 50 out of 100. Completely average. Um, I can tell it was a labor of love, and... I, I really hope that it'll get patched up and become something worth being compared to System Shock and or Dead Space. So this has been Solarix, and I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator, with another Dayton Dissects. I do hope that you've enjoyed, and if so, that you will like, comment, and or subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one, friends. Until then, bye-bye! One, two, three, four Goodbye, goodbye, see you again Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends